And now the Tom Mikes. One of these 421s on the top. The 421s are just a little bit, to me, I mean, I used to do Toms with 57s, and I thought they sounded great, but the 421s just have a little more, boom, a little more oomph to them. Now, you'll recognize the microphone. These are the kind of things people use these live all the time. This is another dynamic mic. And I don't want it to touch the drum, but I, I do want to get near it. And I'm quite concerned about that cymbal that's right there, so we'll see what it sounds like when he's going around it. And I'm going over toward the floor tom now. You know there's a funny thing about microphones. You think they're in there, you think they're locked into position and then you, you turn the stand over and they can fall out. It's always a good idea to hold the microphone instead of just the stand until you're sure it's not gonna fall on the floor. Now a lot of microphones, especially this one here, you could pound a nail in with it, but you just you still don't want to abuse it at all. Now I want to put this in a spot where he isn't gonna hit on it. I think I'm gonna want some of his stuff out of the way. And where the stand is really sturdy. I don't want him to have to think about microphones while he's playing and stay. I feel a lot better coming in this way. And the reason why I feel that way is I'm trying to get as far away from that cymbal and still be on the sweet spot on the, the drum. And get on. You know, this, we're, where are we, in Van Nuys or? We're in Van Nuys and this is a Labor Day weekend. We're in Van Nuys and it is 100 degrees outside. And for some reason, my body knows it. Now, let's just see. I don't like it being quite as straight. I want to get a little angle going in. And let's see what this is like. Uh, now we're going to go to the overheads. Now, in a room like this, I don't want to get too much of the room on the overheads. It's, it's, it's a fine balance now. Now, another thing about doing cymbals is if the mic is too close, when a guy hits the cymbal, of course, the cymbal is going to go like this. And if the mic is too close, it's going to go, wow. So you don't want to do that. And so I like to get it over the center of this microphone. I'm a little concerned about this stand without the weight on the back. And this here ancient tube, no, I mean mic. But I think it's going to work. And I'll make sure I'm lined up good here. She's it's looking good here. I know people that use measuring. They measure the distance between this and the angle of the mic, and I just think that's a little, just a bit anal, if, uh, if you know what I mean. Let's get him up. And I'm going to want about the same height, but now I have to deal with that splash there. We'll see what it's like when he's playing it. Either the song really needs the splash, and I and it'll it'll work good, or it won't need to splash, and I'll take it away, because no matter what a drummer says to you, if he has a a symbol or something there, and he says, Nah, I never hit that. I just have it there because it looks good. If you don't mic it, he'll hit it. So the secret is to take it away. I'm making sure every mic is on cardioid, and we have no filters because I want to get the whole deal. And, yep, and uh, yeah, okay, looking good. Make sure these are not set to voice. These microphones are designed to use on radio where they set them on voice and they have a big, big low end roll off. So there we are. We're gonna do the scratch test. 